Let's put our hands together. The inauguration of the Bharat Pavilion has just happened. I request the dignitaries to please uh, take their seats on the dais. I request all to please take your seats or grab corners. You can see the Bharat Pavilion is filled to capacity. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. We just witnessed the inauguration of Bharat Pavilion at the Cannes Film Festival, so let's have a round of applause. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome the dignitaries and delegates to the inaugural session. We are privileged to have in our midst Indian Ambassador to France and Monaco, His Excellency Javed Ashraf, Information and Broadcasting Secretary, Government of India, Sri Sanjay Jaju, Chairperson, National Film and Video Foundation, South Africa, Ms. Tolana Rose Cheke. <laughs> Director of uh, Films Department, Deputy General Delegate, Cannes Film Festival, Ms. Christian June. Please, sir. Have a seat. And also joining us is uh, Rishi Mehta on the days, a celebrated film director known for Delhi crime and, most recently, Pocha. At the very outset, I would like to say that this pavilion represents a little Bharat in Cannes, a place we all can call home here, a place where all four C's converge, the content, creativity, cinema, and collaboration. This is reflected in the theme of the pavilion, Create in Bharat. This year, as we also know, is significant because several Indian films are significantly represented at the Cannes Film Festival. With these words, uh, may I now request Mr. Ravi Kotakara, President of Film Federation of India, to felicitate the Honorable Ambassador, Secretary Sir, and Christian Jew.
makes a perfect uh, auspicious start to such an auspicious occasion. Well, may I now call on stage uh, Christian June to address us on the occasion. Good morning, everybody, Mr. Secretary, Mr. Ambassador. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to uh, welcome a strong delegation of Indian filmmakers in Cannes, as well as, uh, in a certain regard, as it, of course, in competition since 1994. I think the curse is broken. So <laughs> let's, let's rejoice about that. And uh, also to have, to have a young filmmaker a woman filmmaker is, I hope, a good signal sent to the all filmmakers in India, meaning uh, it's possible, you know? Uh, everything is possible. So that should encourage uh, young filmmakers to, uh, to pursue. Of course, Cannes is a great achievement, but Indian films are traveling all over the world. So, you know, Cannes is not only the main objective. <laughs> it's, uh, the most important is for the films to travel for the Indian films to be seen. So, of course, <coughs> in many countries, we have a strong community, like uh, in Great Britain, in the States, uh, or in other countries. But in Europe, and especially in France, uh, not so many Indian films are released. So, also, can will really help that, I guess. And that's very important for the, for the commercial uh, aspect of the cinema, but also, for, of course, for the artistic one. So, um, thank you for all of you to be here because it's important also that the filmmaker felt to be supported, you know. It's, uh, it's a community, it's an industry, so it's important, but it's also an artistic representation of the country. So, again, I'm very happy that uh, after, after so many years, uh, a young filmmaker is uh, taking the succession of uh, Shaji Karun with Swaham, which was the last film here, and uh, I wish the best for the Indian filmmakers all over the world. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. June. May I now request Ms. Tholana Rose Cheke to take uh, the podium and share her thoughts with us. I think when they were fixing my mic, I unfortunately just lost my speech, so I'll retrieve it quickly. That's fine. Yeah, thank you. I've got it now. of the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting from the Government of India, Mr. Shri Sanjay Jaju, senior government officials and organizations, industry practitioners, members of the media. It is an honor and privilege to address you this morning on this important occasion of the opening of the Bharat India Pavilion. This year at the 77th Annual Khan Film Festival, South Africa is represented by a cohort of astute filmmakers and organizations mandated to serve the film industry, such as the National Film and Video Foundation, Industrial Development Corporation, 
the KZN Film Commission, Eastern Cape Development Corporation, Brand South Africa, West Grove, the Durban Film Office, and production company Mannequin. The National Film and Video Foundation is an agency of the Department of Sports, Arts and Culture mandated to foster the equitable growth of the South African film and audiovisual sector by providing funding for development and production, marketing and distribution, as well as the skill development of filmmakers. The NFBF has 12 co-production agreements and after considerable engagements over the years, we are eager as South Africa to ensure that our collaboration with Asian territories is solidified through a production agreement, a co-production agreement, excuse me, with India soon. Factors such as the dynamic film industries of both countries, and most notably, Bollywood's prominence in the global film industries, the cultural exchanges between the two countries, the measure of Bollywood films produced in South Africa, and long-standing relations as BRICS nations all support the need for a formalized engagement. As we celebrate in South Africa 30 years of democracy, it is important to reflect and note our shared and deep historic ties with India, such as our freedom stories and independent struggles, which have influenced world history at large, to the extent that one cannot talk about the independent struggle of one country without mentioning the other. India's consistent support for South Africa in its anti-apartheid struggle dates back to when India was the first country to serve trade relations with the apartheid government in 1946. India's relations with South Africa were restored after a gap of four decades with the opening of the Cultural Center in May 1993 in Johannesburg. This steady consolidation of close and friendly ties with South Africa has been as a result of bilateral agreements that have been concluded between the two countries in various areas since the assumption of the diplom diplomatic relations in 1993. These areas of collaboration and cooperation have ranged from economic and commercial co cooperation, defense, health, education, human settlements, public administration, science and technology, and culture, which is the primary focus of today. South Africa has the largest concentration of people from Indian origin than any other country outside of India itself, where almost one in every three persons in residing in Durban are of Indian origin. This has contributed significantly to the enablement of the, of the long-standing cultural ties. It is encouraging that the recognition of achievements from both countries' film industries has been prominent as reflected in various iterations of the BRICS Film Festival. The first BRICS Film Festival was organized by India in 2016 in New Delhi, where South Africa won the awards for Best Actor Male and Best Jury. The third BRICS Film Festival was organized by South Africa in 2018 in Durban, which awarded the best film to Newton, an Indian film, and the best award to the best actor female, um, to film star Benita Das for Village Rockstars. The sixth edition of the BRICS Film Festival was held in Goa in 2021, where the best film was awarded to South African film Barakat, which was directed by Amy Jefta, as well as the Russian film The Sun Above Me Never Sets. Among the top Bollywood films that have been produced in South Africa include Miss Donnie, Sanju, Ganiji, Race, and most notable, Cocktail, where South African and Mumbai-based production house Illuminati Films launched an exclusive television commercial campaign which showcased how Bollywood has, um, has, has captured and essentially promoted the tourism destination of South Africa. In 2012, 106,774 tourists from India visited South Africa. Whilst this figure has unfortunately dropped due to the COVID pandemic, we are pleased to note that there has been a considerable increase and this number has stabilized. And it is encouraging to note that film has contributed significantly towards these numbers over the years. 
On behalf of South Africa, I would like to congratulate you all on the opening of the Bharat India Pavilion, and we hope that when we return to Cannes next year, we will have our co-production agreement finalized and in place that will enable, that will enable the production of films in both South Africa and India. I thank you. Thank you, Ms. J.K. May I now request Honorable Ambassador and Secretary Sir to please uh, launch the film guide. That is all the information related to filming in India, followed by the launch of a film on India's cinematic journey that covers primarily the year that has gone by 2023. Let's put our hands together, everyone. just a hint of the monumental love that the Indian cinema has received from its global viewers. With over 1,700 films released on the big screen last year, Indian cinema continues to remain the largest producer of films in the world. True to its roots, Indian cinema is born of diverse communities, their vibrant traditions and rich heritage. One of the oldest producers of movies, Indian cinema expands to over 22 languages, 15 dialects, 100 dance forms and 1,000 festivals of India. south from east to west indian cinema forms one unbreakable bond to bring the nation of 1.4 billion together to capture heroes in every home to the heroes on the biggest of world stages to portray the struggles of man to the victories of mankind but to bring joy to every home and emulate life itself. Indian cinema brings it all together in one gigantic web of immaculate narrations, mesmerizing visuals, outstanding productions, and state-of-the-art animation, the world's fastest growing major economy. The world's biggest film industry the world's most vibrant workforce, the world's most unique locales, with innovation as our compass, diversity our tenet, and collaboration our strength, Indian cinema shall continue to transcend barriers and captivate the world. Indian cinema, where emotions unfold, where dreams come alive, where stories never end. Thank <laughs> you. 
Excellency, Mr. Javed Ashraf, Honorable Ambassador of India to the Republic of France and Principality of Monaco, Ms. Tolana Rose Cheki, the Chairperson of the National Film and the Video Foundation from South Africa, a country with which Bharat India shares strong ties, both in the film and uh, as well as in the long -term side. Mr. Christian Jewell, Director of Films Department, Deputy General Delegate, Khan Film Festival. Mr. Ravi Kotakara and Mr. Richie Mehta. Ladies and gentlemen, It's indeed a matter of proud privilege that all of us are here and we are unveiling the Bharat Pavilion at yet another edition of the Makkah of World Cinema, that is the Khan Film Festival, perhaps with which we have had the strongest ties for decades. I'm very happy that today we have a very strong presence in this edition of the Khan Film Festival as well. It gives me uh, 
immense pleasure that uh, me and the Honorable Ambassador had the honor to inaugurate this rechristened and rejuvenated Bharat Pavilion, and which for the next one week is going to be showcasing the best and the finest of the art and the business of cinema in India. Before I uh, proceed further, let me explain to you uh, the concept of Bharat Pavilion. And uh, why I intend to take a few minutes to tell you this. You know, the whole concept of Bharat Pavilion this time has been created as a sutradhar of the world. Now, one of the, uh, and it's, it's, you, can, you can have a look at uh, the book that, that was released just now. So one of the greatest strengths of contemporary India is her ability to usher her traditional culture and practices into a reimagined and decolonized modernity. And that's how the Bharat Pavilion or the India Pavilion has been designed to be the sutradhar of the world, stories, understand how she shapes visual culture and seek possibilities of collaboration. Ladies and gentlemen, the ancient Sanskrit treatise Nat Nati Shastra, Nati Shastra is perhaps the oldest texts on the performing arts, estimated to be dated between 200 BC and uh, 200 Christian era. It presents a holistic view on dramatic composition, structure of a play, and the constitution of a stage to host it, various genres of acting, body movements, makeup, costumes, role and goals of an art director, the musical scales, musical instruments, and the integration of music with art performances. In fact, it introduces a very peculiar character to the readers, Sutradhar, which actually loosely translates to a term called narrator. narrator. However, it encompasses a much wider and prominent position within the text, almost akin to the conductor of an orchestra. Now, as we look at India's presence at uh, the Cannes Film Festival, we consider India to be a harbinger of her rich history and the landscape of creativity, which denotes her direction for this year at an international stage. Much like the uh, Bharat Pavilion or the India Pavilion at Cannes is an invocation of what she is said to create, and offer this year, the Sutradhar, the narrator, actually is responsible to create an atmosphere of austerity and establishes the scenes about to be unfolded. Now the motif you see all around the India Pavilion, this one, the motif that you see all around the India Pavilion, is an abstract representation of the gifts bestowed upon the Sutradhar, the narrator, by the gods. Uh, this, I'm, I'm, this, I'm reading it from Nati Shastra and uh, obviously this is an English translation so there may be uh, uh, some semantic errors here and there but broadly what it means is that in this Indra gave his dhaja, the auspicious banner, the one that you see in the center here, the one here, that dhaja is given a kotalika which is a curved stick in this form. And uh, you also have uh, Varuna, his bhingar, that is a golden pitcher. And Surya, an umbrella, Seva Siddhi, and Vayu, a fan. And finally, Vishnu gave a Singhasan, the lion seat, Kuvair, a crown, and a goddess, and goddess Saraswati gave visibility as well as audibility. So this is how this whole concept of Sutradhar has been woven into the India Pavilion this year. Friends, India has a deeply rooted historical and cultural relationship with cinema. And uh, it would be no exaggeration to say that, you know, if there are two C's which <coughs> describe our uh, affair with entertainment, it would be cinema on one and cricket on another. Obviously, we're talking about cinema today. And from the early days of silent films, and uh, I think when, when the silent films arrived in India, it's not as if it took many years before the world started making films, it, uh, it happened pretty simultaneously because, as I told you, we have had a rich history and a huge culture of Nati Shastra in our, uh, in our country. But now Indian cinema has evolved into a very dynamic and influential force on the global stage. 
we just know so we make more than 1700 fil feature films every year in multiple languages multiple dialects all across our country and these films not just entertain but they also educate they also inspire they provoke thought and they also reflect the rich tapestry of our society and heritage friends india's uh, audio visual content industry is arguably the largest in the world and uh, as i told you we produce a uh, large number of uh, movies every year from the point in dramas of bengali cinema to the colorful extravagance of tamil and telugu to the heart touching stories of malayalam and the white canvas of hindi cinema each region of our country contributes its own unique flavor to the cinematic mosaic of our country and one of the hallmarks of indian cinema is its ability to transcend boundaries and resonate with audience across the globe especially now with the diaspora that we have uh, in you know all over the world uh, our cinema is uh, the strongest manifestation of i won't call it power but i would call it india soft touch our films have found acclaim and recognition at prestigious international film festivals including cannes and in fact we are very proud that this year in the competition section is an indian film being featured called all we imagine as light this is an indo french co-production by one of our young filmmakers there are also other indian entries in other sections and we have a strong contingent of producers and artists besides the world's one of the largest producers of uh, movies we also have uh, uh, fairly diversified landscape as well as infrastructure available in our country and that is how we are actually offering uh, a red carpet to all the foreign film productions to come and produce <coughs> in india in fact we have a film facilitation office uh, the details of uh, that is also can be seen on the other side of the uh, wall here and a uh, lot of cash incentives but besides that we also offer uh, ease of doing filming business in terms of allowing uh, live shoots getting the permissions etc uh, through a unified single integrated portal in the film facilitation office it's heartening to have uh, more indian projects in the cans official selection this year one each in the competition and uncertain regard and uh, uh, let me also confess that both of both these projects have been the beneficiaries of the support from the government in terms of the incentive as well as the official co-productions so friends sir bharat pavilion uh, here would serve as a hub for networking collaboration and promotion of indian cinemas on the global stage we also have the bharat parv uh, lined up tomorrow and uh, through this we aim to provide a platform for filmmakers producers distributors and other stakeholders to connect exchange ideas and forge partnerships that actually transcends geographical boundaries and the whole idea is that we would like to foster a greater collaboration between the indian audio visual industry and international counterparts thereby enhancing the visibility and accessibility of indian cinema worldwide and serve the national goal of using the power of cinema to enhance country's soft touch we extend a warm welcome to the filmmakers from around the world to explore the myriad possibilities that india has to offer and collaborate with us in bringing captivating stories to life on the silver screen let us today reaffirm our commitment to the art of cinema and the values it represents creativity diversity and inclusivity together let us embark on this cinematic journey with enthusiasm passion and the spirit of collaboration once again welcome to bharat pavilion and uh, Uh, welcome to India. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Sir. Thank you, Christian. Thank you for coming. We now call upon His Excellency, Mr. Javed Ashraf, to deliver the inaugural address. Fortunately, the rain has stopped, so I think I can be audible. Uh, 
and we have one less dignitary here on stage to recognize. And now, can you hear me? Is it clear, audible, or am I too soft? Um, good morning, everyone, uh, to Mr. Sanjay Jaju, the very able secretary of information broadcasting, with whom I've had the, the privilege of working in a somewhat different capacity uh, when he was in the Ministry of Defense, and it just tells you the diversity and the flexibility of the experiences that uh, civil servants have. Um, but also a uh, very warm welcome to, to Rosa Rose Shecky, uh, representing South Africa, a country with which we have a very emotional relationship, a shared journey in pursuit of justice, equity, and uh, dignity but also a shared aspiration for a just world for the future. A lot of this will get reflected in our cinema. Uh, to Rishi Mehta, who's of course um, a great filmmaker, and though I haven't uh, seen, I have to confess, Delhi Crimes, but I've heard great things about it. So a uh, very warm welcome to you. Also to, to Ravi Jay, the producer, people who actually make us it possible for us uh, to be here, to the members of the Indian delegation from Federation of Indian Chamber of Commerce and Industry, I hate saying FITI. Um, also to the those from CII, Confederation of Indian Industry, who might be here, who might not be here. To producers, people who actually are the reasons we are here from the film fraternity from around the world, and in particular from India. Thank you all for lighting up our lives uh, with all the wonderful work that you do. Um, and it is really a great pleasure to be back in Cannes despite this awful weather, which, uh, and to those of you who are here for the first time, we assure you, you normally are welcomed by blue skies and clear weather. Uh, as I'd like to say to Mrs. Jaju that it is not uh, uh, something that we normally experience, but I think nothing will take away from the warmth, the buzz, the excitement of the greatest film festival uh, in the world. Uh, I've been coming here for, of course, for three years, but I have to say this is uh, clearly the best organized Indian presence here. Uh, the Bharat Pavilion, re-Christian, re-imagined, redesigned, and as you've just heard, it's fascinating. Uh, 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 caught behind this um, is, is, is truly, truly a wonderful thing to see, as also, I think, the content of the Indian Pavilion, but also what went behind it, I've seen this year in particular, you know, they, the, the manner in which uh, the Ministry of Information Broadcasting, the NFTC, the other chambers have worked uh, to put our presence here in the festival. It's a reflection of your leadership, Sanjay, uh, for, the, the, for the way you have uh, put together and the effort you're really making to promote Indian cinema. You just had a, uh, an excellent interaction with the embassies around the world to see how we can leverage not just the film festivals, but also uh, different other methods and channels to uh, promote greater collaboration, but also promote Indian cinema abroad. So I think what we are seeing here today is a reflection of your vision and your uh, uh, leadership. And so uh, thank you very much. Um, the, of course, Calm is uh, something which heralds the arrival of spring in, in France. Today it isn't, of course, so. But it means different things to different people. I mean, to a large number of people, it's really about fashion and the red carpet. Fortunately, we leave that for the evening. Um, but it is really also about cinema and content, creativity, uh, and it brings together the best and the best in the world uh, onto the, in this wonderful city. But it's also about business and the business of uh, cinema. And you've just heard what Richie said, that in some senses, festivals serve like incubators and accelerators in the modern uh, terminology because they actually provide platforms for young, sometimes unheralded, um, you know, filmmakers which are banks and which big production houses uh, won't finance or won't back. And then it provides a platform on which they are able to achieve great things. It also brings together some of the greatest in the cinema face to face with some of those who are going to be great in the future. And therefore, the, in this world where we are seeing different platforms, different channels, different methods of reaching the audience, and really mega production houses that are actually concentrating power of cinema making, both in the West and in India. Festivals will, of course, always play a very, very important role in, in really broadening the avenues for those who are in this business. Um, <clears throat> this is a very special year, of course, for us after 
30 years, three decades, we'll have a film in the competition section. It's particularly, uh, particularly important that it is mm, a film that is an Indo-France co-production. All We Imagine is Light is by a young Indian woman filmmaker who's already won accolades here uh, at Cannes with her documentary. That we'll also have a film in Un Certain Regard, uh, which is again by a brilliant young uh, Indo-British filmmaker, Sandhya Suri, who's going to show Santosh. Uh, which also in some senses mirrors some of our contemporary challenges, but also some of our great achievements. Um, and then there is, of course, going to be the felicitation of Santosh Sivam, um, a, a super uh, cinematographer by uh, Agnigo, um, that make greatest uh, lenses for cinema uh, in, in the world. And it is interesting because he, as a, as a cinematographer, as a filmmaker, as a director, bridges both the worlds that he can be. Uh, he's made a name for himself in the festivals, but also in the commercial uh, section. But I would like to say that even as we speak about uh, the importance of the presence of a cinema in the competition section today and in Asset Arga, it doesn't really necessarily reflect the quality, the scale and the, of cinema making uh, and the craft in India. Because in the course of those past 30 years, we've seen really uh, Indian cinema grow and grow considerably in narrative, in its vocabulary, in its craft, in the themes it chooses, uh, and in the manner in which it, it has evolved in, as a medium of storytelling, of capturing the extraordinary diversity of Indian experiences uh, as India is undergoing through a profound, profound transformation uh, at the, in the past three decades. Uh, but it is also a, a point in time where we are seeing an extraordinary growth in the popularity of Indian cinema and we have just uh, seen some of those astonishing figures of the revenues that some of our more popular movies have drawn abroad. Uh, it's, uh, and I can tell you from our own experiences here that uh, in the last one year uh, we saw certain movies opening in Paris to 16 full shows on the first day running for several weeks together. We've seen a at the at a museum Craig Brandley, an extremely successful exhibition on Bollywood, 75 years journey of Bollywood, uh, at one of the most prestigious museums in, in, in Paris. And what's interesting is that Indian Bollywood musicals are running to full houses for weeks in, in, in Paris and some other cities. Uh, drawing full houses in, in, in theaters which have 2,000, 3,000 seats. Just a glimpse of what uh, is happening with this. And this is going around, in, I really think, in parallel with the attention that India is getting in the world today. Geopolitically, economically, uh, in terms of its philosophical contribution, in terms of its thoughts and ideas, and the role that it will play in a multipolar world of great uncertainty as we, as we transition from an existing international order into a new order. So all of these things get linked. And therefore, it becomes very important for us uh, to be, have a greater presence abroad as far as cinema is concerned. So it's also for Khan and other film festivals to recognize this reality. Because no film festival in the world no can call itself global or international without a significant presence of Indian cinema. Because there is no other country and there is no other film industry which expresses itself in so many different languages, in so many different idioms, so many different crafts, and tells such extraordinary stories of human experiences and human emotions that are universal. No other country is, in a sense, the microcosm of the world, its successes, its failures, its hopes, its aspirations, its triumphs, its tragedies, and where the transitions and the turbulence and the challenges are reflection of all that is happening in the world. But we have to do our part too. And, and I think we are seeing that change. We have to be far more engaged, far more engaged as government, as the Film Producers Association that uh, Mr. Bhuvan Nad uh, uh, runs, as uh, the big houses, the big business houses, the big film production houses that seem to be always absent because from festivals because they run their own uh, particular channels of reaching the world. But I think it's very important for us to do our bit as well in, in enhancing our presence. And I like FIKI and CII in particular 
to evaluate what has been the impact in so far as our presence from the business perspective is concerned in terms of oil, in, in various festivals. Because there is a very important business dimension to it. It supports livelihood in, uh, in India. It supports, uh, it supports the economy. And there are three different dimensions, which Secretary also mentioned, uh, of this aspect. One, of course, is that we can do more co-productions. India and France, of course, are great uh, 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 you know, partners in this endeavor. Two countries with very distinct cultures and tradition of filmmaking, great pride in what they are resistant uh, to the encroaching embrace of the power of Hollywood uh, in the world. So this is something that we need to do more and more, not just with France, but with others. We, of course, have to be able to do more in terms of uh, marketing and using now the power of AI, the power of different digital platforms, the fact that you have people now uh, phones on every farm and this is something with lang uh, language learning models. You can do immediate translations or immediate dubbing of films in so many different languages uh, that it is now cost effective to be able to reach the entire world. Likewise, I would say, I would tell the foreign producers here, you need to be present in Goa. You need to be present in Indian Film Festival of India. Why? <coughs> Because where else in the world will you find 1.4 billion consumers of content in an economy that is growing at 7 8% where there are 850 million smartphone users with the cheapest data in the world, with, the, with, with perhaps the fastest spread of 5G and eventually, I assure you, the fastest spread of 6G whenever uh, it comes. It's an extraordinary market. And just as I say that it is important for us to be present here, I'm doing a pitch for uh, International Film Fest, International Film Festival of India in Goa, because it is be something that the film producers around the world are missing if they are not present there. There is going to be the biggest market for entertainment in the world without any doubt at all. But cinema also is important for, for, for us as, 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 as diplomats. Because what we are also look at is the value in using it for shooting in different countries. Everyone knows that Switzerland became a favorite destination for Indian tourists when Shah Rukh Khan serenaded uh, Kajol around the mountains of Matterhorn. And now then you had groups of tourists trying to replicate or imitate what Shah Rukh Khan did, sometimes with, without any success at all. But, but it really is likewise for India. And I'm so glad to see that many states are represented here to promote, to promote their destination. But I'd like to tell the producers abroad, do not use India only for reinforcing stereotypes. That when you do a chase scene, you need to do it through the village streets with cows and, uh, and, and, and bullock carts uh, as the hurdles. Or if you want to do a romance, it doesn't have to be simply in the palaces of uh, of Rajasthan, but also there are some new ways to look at India. And it isn't just the tiger that defines the biodiversity and wildlife of India or the elephant. There is much more to it. So I think we need, because it's important that we break stereotypes, and cinema is a great way to break stereotypes in a physical sense, in a landscape sense, but also in terms of storytelling. It isn't just important to show some stereotypical scenes about gender in India or about certain societies. And for us, I think in a world of diplomacy, it really matters. It really matters because no matter what is the size of an economy, the weight of your diplomacy, the reach of your, of your, of, of your business, or the power of your military, the strength of your innovation, ultimately, nations need to occupy a positive space in the minds of people. And for that, cinema and culture plays a very, very critical role. More than any other form of culture performing arts, much as I love classical uh, forms of art, it is cinema that is able to penetrate the minds and hearts of people like no other. And it is particularly, therefore, important uh, for us to recognize the power of this medium, even in the world of diplomacy, which is why I call all of you 
the real great ambassadors of India in terms of uh, making, putting people in the hearts and minds of, uh, of people. And for our part at the embassy, we are doing what we can, and I must make a small pitch for my team, Pujia, and others who are here, that we do support a lot in terms of cinema. Uh, with Dr. Bhubanwal, we are working to create an entirely new weekend of cinema and San Tropez in the Akrans of cinema, cuisine, and culture. We started last year. It's already grown big. And we want it to become the most important uh, festival of Indian cinema, cuisine, and culture in Europe. And we have positioned it just after Cannes so that some of the people can stay back. It is a, it's a great start last year. It's become even bigger. We're getting support also, and we live to the government for support as well. Last year, we supported uh, a festival of, in, of movies called Ganga Sosin, which is Ganges on the River Seine in Paris. Uh, again, an exceptional uh, support we got from the city of Paris, but also from the audiences for a great repertoire of cinema from different parts of India. And you'll all be surprised to know, and this is nothing to take away from Khan, that there is a festival in Nantes uh, called uh, Festival des uh, Trois Continents, that is Festival of Three Continents, which every year features films from India. And last year was a retrospective on Amitabh Bachchan. This year is a retrospective on Raj Kapoor. And they will feature some important cinemas that's going to take place in November. It gets an audience of 30, 35,000 people. And these are the ways in which we are trying to, uh, to promote cinema. We did that last year as well with our own Festival of India hosted by the embassy. And so I think as we, as a, let me say in conclusion, therefore, that there is the importance of Khan will always be there, and we need, as we have seen already this year, a far, far more strategic approach to our presence here, from the design of the pavilion to the message. And it is important to understand that when we say Bharat Pavilion, it captures more than just the fact of the name of Bharat. No other cinema had making has dived so deep into the cultural traditions and roots to make contemporary expressions as Indian cinema has. So when you look at the dances in Indian movies, you try to juxtapose it against the classical dance forms from which they have emerged, and you'll realize that this is so, I think from its strategic conception to the content, to the people who have uh, joined us over here, and to, uh, and, and, to, and to the manner in which we are presenting ourselves it's a great leap forward, and I hope that in the coming years, through the ministry, through the film fraternity, but also through the chambers, that we'll continue to make the kind of impact at Khan and everywhere else that I think the Indian cinema and the Indian nation truly deserves. So all the best to you for a great festival. Look forward to enjoying it. Thank you very much. Ambassador, may I now request Mr. Kotakara, President of Film Federation of India, to please take the podium and uh, deliver the vote of thanks. Good morning. This is an old Indian mythology. When good things happen, Auspicious things happen. When something wonderful happens, God is happy and God blesses you with the way and it does rain today. So thank God. And not bright. Not bright. So God has blessed us to start this and great evening. Now we will try it again. Yeah. I, we have to, you know, I'll just take a few, few minutes. I thank uh, Sri Jan Sanjay Jaju sir, a dynamic person, very excellent, wherever he went, he has been uh, doing wonders and uh, heard a lot of him and now he has joined our ministry, our, especially MIB, which is from our information ministry. He's very dynamic, who works 24-7. That's a big problem for the, most of the people. But he says, I want this to be done, and he's getting it done. We are happy to have you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. There's one more dynamic person who is totally, you know, uh, immersed 
in our industry. That is our Javed ji, our ambassador. Past three years I've been seeing that he has been attending every film festival. He goes, watches films. He says, bring films, watch films, shoot films, do everything with films. We are with you and you and I will be a part of it. So we need people to support us. Thank you. And our dignitaries also. But I will have to just say, when uh, Harish Chandra was made a Dada Saab Palke, the, when he did it in 1913, if he had come here or his spirit had visited this, he would have cried with tears of joy, seeing that India's cinema has grown so big, so big. We are proud of what? One is achieving the most important, that is spreading of good heritage, culture, and scripting. And, you know, every film which has been made in India, sir, is totally different due to the different languages, different cultures we have, sir. So we are really proud making from one film in 1913 to around 4,000 films today. We make around 4,000 films today. That's one important thing, sir. And as for Khan's, everyone knows it started in 1947. And I had a rare privilege of coming here from 1992, sir. Okay. I've been coming here. And I've seen the growth, and the growth has gone quite huge. It's fantastic. The most, another one important thing is this pavilion. When it started in 2014, it was a baby which was born. But when it was born itself, this baby rode, sir. At the time itself, it made wonders. It made people from different countries to look at Indian pavilions. What, what are these guys up to? They supported cinema. They came and they said, this is Indian cinema. Watch Indian cinema. Take it to your country. Screen the cinema. Let your people from your country watch this good content. That is what India Pavilion has been doing from 2014. Am I right? 2014. It has been something great. And as the Film Federation of India, we are proud that we have got people to support us. And that is the most important, the Ministry of Information and Broadcasting. We thank our Prime Minister, we thank our Minister, and we thank the entire team who works 24-7 with us to promote this great event. Sir. Another one most important thing we should also thank, we should also tell everybody is, the Government of India has given us a lot of incentives. They give incentives not to make it commercial. They give it incentives to make good cinema, valuable cinema. Let us not uh, forget, India always says, Vasudeva Kutumbaka. The world is ours, the world is one family. We are one family, but we can spread a message of love. That has always been done with, with the Indian cinema. It has always been doing that. But I have also I've got another two yeah. simple words to say, sir. In this pavilion, we have done one thing, great. We have marketed small films, sir. This pavilion is a place where you are able to market small films. You are able to meet different producers from different countries. So small film producers get a chance to meet different producers. Next, co-productions. A lot of co-productions have been spoken in the same term. Big place. And the success of a co-production is seen because we got an entry into Cannes this year also, sir thanks to the Indian Pavilion and the great initiatives taken by the government. We are not praising the government, I am not standing here because I am thanking the government for doing this. Not praising, it is thanking because without a teacher we cannot proceed. The, any industry cannot proceed. The MIB has been giving us, you know, perfect suggestions how to move, how to go ahead and how to achieve. The MIB has been with us and with that our pavilion, especially our, uh, you know, are uh, Fiki. And for oh, one more word, I have to say, the person called Lena, who has been in Fiki, right here with you, for years yeah, she has been struggling. Oh, Lena. Lena. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. She has been struggling for Fiki. Hats off to us. So, it's all together. Once again, I thank the ministry, our 
Uh, you know, amb ambassador, NFDC, FFO, Fiki, and every single individual who's fond of cinema, every person who has got interest in cinema, kindly make cinema. It's a simple saying. You have seen this Johnny Walker whiskey? Sorry, I have to say that. He keeps walking. He does not <laughs> stop. So let us keep walking, continuing, making good cinemas. Let us entertain the world. And let us also learn from cinema. Thank you. Thank you.